Good morning and a warm welcome to you all. Um, we weren't expecting many people here today uh, due to uh, the date and all those things. We know lots of people are away, but uh, we are glad to see those of you who are here. So if you all spread out, it'll look a bigger congregation. You could try, <laughs> you could try and do that. Um, but it is really nice to see you. I hope you had a wonderful Christmas. I hope you enjoyed uh, the time off that you had. And uh, uh, today we will uh, begin by worshipping the Lord right at the beginning of the year. And today my, my talk will be on newness. Newness. Because we all need newness. We all need hope. And uh, I hope for uh, this uh, new year as well. So, let's pray. Heavenly Father... Send your spirit upon us, speak to us, encourage us, and give us hope for the year to come. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand together. You said. Ask and you will receive whatever you need. You said, pray and I'll hear from heaven and I'll hear your land. Verse 2. You said, your glory will fill the earth like water the sea. Lift up your eyes, the harvest is here, your kingdom is near. You said, ask and I'll give the nations to you, O oh Lord. That's the cry of my heart. Distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us. Said, ask and you will receive whatever you need. You said, pray and I'll hear from heaven and I'll heal your land. You said, your glory will fill the earth like water the sea. You said, lift up your eyes, the harvest is here, your kingdom is near. You said, ask and I'll give the nation to you, O oh Lord. That's the cry of my heart, distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us. Asking, I'll give the nations to you, O oh Lord. That's the cry of my heart. Distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on earth. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, praise his name. Declare his glory among the nations. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. Good to me. Strength in weakness, come rescue 
Heavenly Father, we thank you for your provision in the year past. And Lord, we thank you for the way you will provide for us as well. Help us do what you call us to do, to give and to sacrifice to you, Lord, our financial offering. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. The solid rock, my hope is built on nothing less. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest spring, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When darkness fails his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every hot and stormy gale, my hands are holding in the hail. On Christ the solid rock and sand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. His oath is covered and his blood support me in the well we want. And all around my soul be swayed. He then is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh may I then in him be found, rest in his righteousness alone. 
faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Please take your seats, and uh, I will. I, I can give the announcements uh, today. Uh, we're we're beginning uh, this year really by saying, if anyone does want prayer after the service, then prayer will be available. Uh, if you'd like to just come up the front, make yourself known, we'd be very happy uh, to pray uh, for you. Next Sunday, we we start again as it were. We, uh, today is the last two weeks have been a sort of stutter um, of, of numbers, but next week uh, we start with our Sunday prayer at 9 and our Ardell Sunday School at 9.30. Higher ground service will be on Wednesday the 11th in the chapel. That's a midweek worship service that we're reinstating uh, because we feel that's a very important thing uh, to be involved with. Now, there might be a men's breakfast next week. Uh, uh, here it says there isn't, but there, there might be. We will let you know next. Yeah, uh, week after next, week after next. We will let you know uh, if that is on or not. And with that, I'm now going to ask uh, Brian, Rachel, and the family uh, to, to come forward. Uh, for those of you who don't know who this family are... <laughs> Brian is our, our associate pastor uh, here in the church for the last, let me get this right, 12 years. Is it 12? 12 years. And um, they are going on sabbatical uh, for three months at the beginning of the year. And uh, we, we are really glad that they're taking this time, uh, time out, uh, time to... Uh, just refresh themselves as they continue in ministry. And what we're going to do right now is just pray for them. So pray with us. The elders will pray. Uh, pray God's blessing uh, on them uh, as they uh, they will be about, an, uh, how far is it? It's New Hampshire somewhere. But but don't, don't go and visit them. <laughs> All right. Um, but uh, they'll be in uh, New Hampshire. They've got a place to go there uh, just to take time out. So we're, we're looking forward uh, to that refreshment uh, coming upon them. Jesus said to his disciples, come apart and rest a while. Okay, and that is a really important thing to do. I'm going to ask Jim to open in prayer and then Fred and then I will close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for faithful servants who serve you without um, thought of their own um, selves. That sometimes people who serve you because they love you, because they love your people, people who are faithful. We love this family. We love what you have done through their lives in us. We pray, Father, that you will give them a time of rest and relaxation and recharging as their family grows, as they grow together, as they heal, as they uh, continue to honor you and serve you. We thank you for their service here, their service to you. We pray your blessing on them as they go. Amen. And Father God, we just pray for this family. Just pray that you bless them during this time, that during this time of, of refreshment, renewal, that, that you 
speak to them, that you meet their needs, that you have them grow close to you, close to each other, Father. And we do pray that us as a church, that we remember daily to pray for them. That we pray for the, that you continue to work in their lives, that you've done so mightily within our church. We just thank you for the blessing they've been to many of us personally, to, to us as a church, and to this community. And we pray that this time be a true time of, of, of sabbatical, of, a time of, of really drawing, regaining that, that, that joy of ministry that they have. In Jesus' name. Yeah. The ministry of the whole family. We thank you for the kids. We thank you for each and every one. Thank you for the wider family that they have and everything they've been to this church. Now, Lord, we commend them to you. And uh, as we have said, we ask that you might work in them, guide them, and refresh them. Uh, bring them back with strength. We pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. <laughs>
shows my age, I guess. But over the years, I have really enjoyed New Year's. And in Wales, we had a tradition. And the tradition was, when we were children, we would go from house to house, from any time from 12 midnight, which I never did, but maybe 7 in the morning, until 12 noon. And you'd go and you'd sing a song. My brother and myself, we'd walk and we would sing this song. Clenig, Clenig, Boredi the Callan, now the Uram Serigaskli, Arian, Bluthine, with Aichi, Akiba, Obsianati, the Mariu, Viminadi, Bluthine, with Aichi, Money. <laughs> You'd knock, you put your hand out for money. The one time I really do remember doing that with my brother, we nearly made a pound in money something like 19 and 6 or something like that, which was an absolute treasure for a 10-year-old, you can imagine. And we were dreaming what we were going to spend it, uh, spend it on. We used to go to my auntie's house, and my, my auntie was one of these Dickensian aunties. She still lived in Victorian Wales. She looked Victorian. And she was so, uh, what's the word? I, I must be careful. <laughs> she was so, uh, the word we use in Wales is stingy. Do you use that word? You do. Okay, all right. Uh, stingy. She didn't like to give you too much. You have plenty of money. But uh, I, I can always remember going to her house and she would insist that we went there first. Because she was superstitious. Oh, she was superstitious. She had been married to a minister all her life, but that didn't seem to rub off on her at all. She was incredibly superstitious. And we'd go round the back. I can remember going round the back. And you'd knock at the back door. And my brother and myself, in perfect harmony, would sing, Clenig, Clenig, Boredi the Callan. Then she'd open the door. And I think she gave us a, a silver shilling which was, uh, uh, you know, it's, everything's changed in Britain. Uh, but, it, but that was a lot of money. And sometimes she gave us two shillings. That was wonderful. So it was worth putting up with her, all right? And she would insist, as we came in, that, we, uh, that I would come in, especially because I had, in those days, it's a long time ago, I had black hair, right? I had black hair. And the superstition was that you get a black-haired person to come through the back door and go out through the front door, and that would clear everything for the new year. So she was superstitious enough, and we lived on it. It was great. It was wonderful. They're my memories of new year. It's an interesting time. And as I've thought about New Year's and New Year's sermons over the years I've been preaching, uh, I've thought all sorts of different things. New Year is something psychological, not spiritual. I don't believe in magic, okay? So, the air that I breathe now in 2023 is exactly the same air as I breathed in 2022. There's no magic air when 12 o'clock happens and when the ball comes down in New, in New, York, uh, New, York, uh, New York City, okay? It's not suddenly magical. Oh, wonderful. Everything has changed. The reality, we breathe the same air and here's the bad news. Do you know who I take with me into 2023? Me. Me. I am my biggest problem. Okay? I am. I am. And generally speaking, that's true of most of us. Not that uh, I'm your biggest problem. I didn't mean to say it like that. But we have that battle. We have that battle. But New Year is a time... To be aware that we can change. It's an opportunity to think about change. 
It's an opportunity to take that step. That step will not be taken for you. It's not automatic. You will have to do it. It's a checkup time. I've told you many times from this pulpit, I hate checkups. I hate them. Oh, I hate them. I hate them with a holy hatred. I hate going to the doctor and having my physical checkup at the end of the year or whenever it is. And I go, no, oh. I, I feel like a school child being checked up. And especially when they look at my blood work. I say, oh, your vitamin D is not doing very well. Your cholesterol is this. I think, oh, I don't want to go through this anymore. Don't tell me. But the checkup is important. A checkup is good. When I first came to this church, just a number of years in, uh, we, we don't have that many checkups. Well, we didn't used to in Britain. So we, we, you, if you're ill, you go to the doctor in Britain. You don't, you don't go to the doctor if you're not ill, especially if you're a man. But of course, because this was private health insurance, then, you know, I had to go to the doctor. I said, well, what, what do you mean, Gwen? Why are you going to go have a checkup? I'm okay. And I went for a checkup, and they found something, and there was something wrong that needed to be put right, and they put it right. So it's good at times to have a checkup. It's good to stop a while and think about your life. And it's a great time to make resolutions. We all make lots of interesting resolutions. I don't know how many of you have made resolutions uh, uh, this year. I've got one or two resolutions I make every year. I once again give up my gummy bears. I love gummy bears. I've told you before, I'm addicted to gummy bears. Oh, I love them. But I allow myself two weeks over Christmas where I can eat gummy bears. I allow that. And then I give them up again for another 50 weeks. And then I'll come back to them next year. It's not a big resolution, it's not a big thing. But it's something. And I want to challenge you this year to think on some of the resolutions you might make. They won't be done for you. It could be anything. It could be to do with your health. One of them I'm going to do, I'm going to put my Fitbit on again. My Fitbit broke. I don't know why I think there's something went wrong with it. And, you know, I got out of the habit for the last three weeks of wearing it. You know, the, that happens. And, you know, 10,000 steps when it's cold outside is a pain. So this was a great excuse I could use with Gwen. Oh, well, you know, I don't know how to do this. And then she fixed it. There we are. And doing those 10,000 steps is a very good thing to do. We all have different health needs. And New Year's can be a time when we do it. It could be something totally different. It could be something to do with your own spiritual life. It's always good to do. It's good to take a look at yourself and say, do you know, have, have I changed this last year? What changes have there been? in my spiritual life in the last year. Because changes will only come if you take steps. If you don't take any steps, I tell you where you'll get, nowhere. You'll be standing and looking around with the same view. You've got to take steps. And that could mean, as I said, anything. Could mean anything. It might be taking on a new project. It might be saying, do you know, I've been meaning to read the book of Isaiah for years and I never get down to it. I think I'm going to do it. Or you might just say, I just want to read the New Testament. I'm going to do a little bit every day. Or it might be, I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm going to pray, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to get involved in a project in the church, I'm going to help out. It could be anything. I'm just throwing these out. You have got to make those decisions. But now is a good time to do it. It's a great time to do it. There's a wonderful verse which is quoted in the New Testament. 
and it's, I think it's from Isaiah 40, where Isaiah speaks about making a path in the desert. Make a straight path in the desert. What he's saying is, you've got to make a road before you can go on it. You've got to clear the way. If you don't clear the way, you can't go on it. Create for yourself opportunities to make a difference in your own life. But it will mean some clearing. For me, over this uh, uh, last week, last two weeks, especially last week, it's been a time of, of cleaning my, my study back home. And sometimes I, I know when things are going wrong because my study's in a mess. And when I clean my study and put all the books in the right place, do you know I feel better? I really do. What am I doing? I'm creating a path in the desert of my study. And we've got to start there by creating that path. You see, one of my favorite Dickensian characters, and he appears in um, uh, Copperfield, in David Copperfield, is Mr. Micawber. And those of you who've read Dickens, oh yeah, he's, he's one of my favorite characters, Mr. Micawber. And Mr. Micawber, his favorite sentence is this, something will turn up, something will turn up. Something will turn up. Do you know, very often nothing did turn up. Because he was continuing to do the same old thing in the same old way and get himself in debt. It's a great story. A great story. So we need to beat a path through the accumulated undergrowth of our lives. If we're going to get anywhere. And we use times and seasons. We use them. We use New Year. We can use Lent. We can use Christmas. We can use any of these things, any of the church calendar. You haven't got to, the Bible doesn't say you, you've got to. But you can, and there helps. And people find them a help. New habits, they tell me, Take 21 days to form. <laughs> right? You look it up yourself. <clears throat> it makes sense. To begin with, to begin a habit is hard going. It's really hard going. To do something that you don't usually do can be really hard. But the second week, it gets a bit easier. And by the third week, you're used to it. And you've got a new habit. It takes three weeks. But you can change. You can change. You really can. You can change the form of your life. As you know, my wife, Gwen, is, is a medievalist. And uh, uh, she, she did all her research on, on medieval spirituality uh, way back in the day. And in, in, in medieval life, people would arrange their prayers, and their days. And they had books called Books of Hours. They're gorgeous. They are gorgeous. They're all hand-painted, hand-done. And um, I've, I've, I've actually got one or two pages from them that I gave to Gwen. That's what you call love. That's what you call love, I tell you. Just a page. I could only, I could only buy a page. Uh, simply because they're, they're, they're so expensive. But they're gorgeous. But what they are, they would be used by nuns and, and people uh, to have regular times of prayer. They would read out the prayers to themselves. In other words, they were getting their life in order. Their hours in their lives weren't going to be wasted. The book of hours would bring God into their arrangements and into what they were doing. One of the big problems I think we've got in this society, very simple, 
is that it's a secular society. Even religious people are secular. Many people want to keep God in, in church. <laughs> they want to, you know, the day-to-day -day of, of, of life. But this year, I want to challenge you to bring God into your life, into your daily life. And you don't need to be a Pharisee. You don't. You don't need to be a Pharisee. Some people make this mistake. Today is a day you can make a resolution, okay? You know, it's nice. But some people say, if, you, if they forget to make a resolution the first, they've got to wait till next year to start. No, you haven't. Who told you that? That's nuts. Right, no, 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 no. You can start the day after. You can start whenever you want to start. Because God is saying, take a step in faith. Take a step. Don't be a Pharisee against yourself when you can really make a difference. As I said, there is no magic in the new year. No magic. And I've thought about, you know, how we say Happy New Year to everyone. Nothing wrong with that at all. Please, I'm... I'm but it's not magical. It's not an incantation. <laughs> happy, happy New Year. I said Happy New Year to all of you in 2020. <laughs> all right. We had COVID. But it wasn't always a Happy New Year. Life is like that. But God is willing to be with us even when it will not be a Happy New Year. He will walk in this year to come with us. And we will not need to waste the time he has given us. One of the most important things in life, surely, is time. Surely. And we waste so much of it. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> Do you know if someone told you you've got, uh, give me a thousand dollars, and I'll give you an extra month to live. Oh, yeah, whoa, absolutely. Thousand dollars, of course. But, you know, use what you got. Use the time God has given. It's precious. And once it's gone, it's gone. It's gone. Every day is an important day where we can take steps through the wilderness. Every day. Every day can be a new day. We live in a, a fragile society. I don't know if you've uh, noticed how fragile everyone is in, uh, in the last few years. Everyone's fragile. Everyone's offended all the time. People go to the door waiting to be offended. There they go, they put on, they're out, they go, oh, they said that, oh, you did blah, blah, blah. And they go and they complain, they go through life being offended. I've got a word for them. Grow up, for goodness sake. Dear, dear, dear. People become victims of their own instincts. In other words, they're not, they are not deciding what to do. They're blaming everyone else that things aren't going right. And in this year, I want to encourage you, don't blame anyone else. Take on the responsibility for who you are and don't blame anyone else. Don't be a victim. Rather, take control of who you are and who God has made you. By choice. By choice. I'm a great believer in choice. If you're a human being, you've got choice. You haven't just got to go with your instincts. You've got choice. And once you say, I'm just instinctive, and that's all it is, you stand at the graveside of your soul. Because you're not in control anymore. 
there's a number of things we're not in control of. 2020, we weren't in control of COVID. You know, wasn't that, that wasn't that an awful time? And you know, they, it, 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 do you know what I, <laughs> I remember the day they shut my pub down. It was St. Patrick's Day. I look forward to St. Patrick's so much. And I was looking forward to my boiled dinner. Do you know I love my boiled dinners? And on that day, everything shut down. I go, oh, no. I felt sorry for myself. <laughs> felt sorry for myself. We're not in charge of everything. We have choices to make. But God can make a difference in our lives as we take steps. There are two words for new in Greek. Two words. One is neos. And I know I've got my Greek experts sitting in, up in heaven here uh, looking down on me. So I'm a bit worried about this because I haven't checked out. But, you know, just don't say anything if I'm wrong, okay? Uh, but you, you can check with them. <clears throat> One is neos, which just means new, new time. Neos, neos, new, just new. And then there's ky kairos. And that has a, a stronger name. In other words, it's a, it's a, a different nature of newness. It's fresh. I'm going to use the word fresh. The kinediatheke, the New Testament, kinediatheke, the fresh New Testament. It's not just something new, it's fresh. And I think we need them both. We need the neos of time. Because that can encourage us. But we need the kainos as well, the freshness. And I pray that this year, for all of us, will be a fresh year. Fresh. I like fresh. I like the word fresh. I like fresh bread. When I, can, when I, when I go to uh, my mother-in-law's today, there'll be fresh baked bread waiting for me. Fresh. It'll be there, just been made. And my brother-in-law will cut it. Warm. Butter it. <laughs> and you eat it. And it's fresh. And it's good. And it's wonderful. Well, may this new year be fresh bread. May it be fresh bread. Because it's possible. We pray for Brian and Rachel that they, in the next three months, will eat fresh bread. <laughs> We're thinking of you. We're going to miss you. But you need to sit down and get your fresh bread and enjoy it. And we all need it as well. May God help us to eat that fresh bread. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, Thank you that you make us new. In Christ, we are new creations. The old is gone. The new has come. Help us not add old to what is new. Help us take new steps. Help us clear the paths to take us through the undergrowth of our existence. That we may get somewhere. Hear our prayers, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have, uh, if you don't have your uh, wine and bread, and for those of you who don't know, the bread is on top. You just pull that open. Just put your hand up if you haven't got one, and then uh, uh, Kermit will uh, will bring you one of these. You're welcome uh, to join uh, with us. Uh, if you're a visitor, you're more than welcome to join. Uh, with us in this communion. This is not a, a closed uh, communion, but an open one for those who are believers.
I'm sure I'm hearing angels, but anyway. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> That's new. <coughs> it is right, and indeed our duty and joy, Lord and Heavenly Father, God Almighty and Eternal, always and everywhere, to give thanks through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. Because through him, you have created everything from the beginning and formed us in your image. Through him, you delivered us from the slavery of sin when you gave him to be born as man, to die on the cross and to rise again for us. Through him, you claimed us as your own people when you enthroned him with you in heaven. And through him, sent out your Holy Spirit, the giver of life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with the company of heaven, we acclaim you and declare the greatness of your glory. We praise you now and forevermore. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. For on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So too, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given you thanks... He gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Let's stand. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.